What I'm about to tell you is what took me from playing in rooms like this to playing in rooms like this. And I think they might surprise you because I don't really hear anyone talk about this. Growing up, all I wanted to do was play in a professional band, but after playing dozens of bars, skate parks, and friends' basements, I never felt any closer to that dream of going pro. Meanwhile, I had a couple of my friends' bands really take off, and all I could feel was jealousy and wonder, why am I not the drummer for these bands? It should be me. The reality was, I wasn't ready for these types of gigs, and I had no intention of being ready. I just wanted it to happen without doing any of the work. So my friend's band went on to tour the world, and I was left at home. So I spent the next decade playing with any and all bands that I possibly could. Country, pop punk, indie rock, hard rock, playing at churches, teaching students, making drum videos, you name it. I was doing it. But I couldn't help but have a burning desire to get out there and tour. And after years of hard work, I got a text message that changed everything. And spoiler alert, I actually got the gig. And since then, we've toured all around the globe. We've been nominated for two Grammys and we have multiple number one rock radio hits. It's insane. But there were just a few problems. I was not a metal drummer. I had never toured in my entire life and I only had three weeks to learn this band's entire set list. So in this process, I realized that if I wanted to turn myself into a pro musician in three weeks, that there are eight key skills that I had to develop. Otherwise, this opportunity would slip away and I'd be stuck at home yet again. And honestly, I believe these eight skills are vital for any musician who wants to learn how to play live, learn songs more efficiently, and develop their skills more. The truth is, I was not the right drummer for the gig, but I had to become the right drummer for the gig in just three weeks, but how? Number one is I had to find and destroy my core weaknesses. I couldn't play double bass pedal, and I was trying to play in a metal band. Those two things don't mesh. But I had to go a level deeper and ask myself, why do I suck at the double bass? Well, one, I don't even own a double bass pedal, so had to fix that. And two, it's because my left foot really sucked, so I had to create exercises for myself to help me develop strength and control in my left foot. So I would spend hours practicing just a few key exercises, some just isolating my left foot and some working on alternating both my feet. And it took me from struggling to play double kick beats like this, to blasting double kick at 220 BPM like this. But again, I only had three weeks, so I improved a lot, but I still couldn't keep up with insane metal drummers like Chris Turner, who can do this. And that's actually why I teamed up with him to create the world's best double kick course called 30 Day Double Kick Mastery. If you want to learn how to transform your double kick insanely fast, then you won't want to miss this course. We're only opening it up to the first 160 people. So if you want to be first in line, join the wait list right up here for when it drops on October 23rd. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this one. Number two, I had to learn complex songs fast. You see, it wasn't enough to just learn how to play double bass. I had to learn how to play double bass to a 16 song set list and you guessed it, just three weeks. So the three sets I used are chart, notate, air drum. So the first is charting. This is where I would just go through the song structure of how many measures is the verse? How many measures is the chorus? Just so I'd have a wide overview of what was exactly happening in the song. Plus it allows you to just sit down and listen to the song intentionally and get a feel for the whole flow. And then once you've got it written down, it sticks in your brain more. Once I had the structure listed out, if there were any specific drum parts that I felt I couldn't quite figure out, I would go in and notate those in particular. This process is really helpful because it helps you dissect these really nitty gritty parts of each song. Repeating the parts over and over and analyzing each and every single note, and then you can just play it back and listen to it and try to play along. 
Then I would literally sit on my couch with a pair of drumsticks in hand and I would air drum along to the song. The reason for this is way too often we put in our headphones and we start playing drums along to the song and we think we sound awesome, but what happens is you're not hearing all of the subtle details that are in the song because your drums are so loud, you're overpowering everything. But when you air drum, you can hear those little ghost notes. You can see, oh, they went for a fill here. I missed it. Now these three steps are so powerful because yes, it takes time, but you've really gotten a feel for what the original drummer has done. Now the third skill that really helped me was tricking my brain into memorizing the set list. I didn't want to be thinking about the song order or anything like that. So what I did is I went undercover to one of their shows, actually listed out the order of their set list and then created a playlist in Spotify of the songs in order. And that is all I listened to all the time for those three weeks. It's really helpful to get your brain to anticipate the next song once you're done with the first one. A lot of the time we go play the first song and then we have no idea what's coming up next. We have no idea what tempo it is. But since I had been listening to this set list on repeat for weeks, my brain anticipated what the next song was gonna be. So the whole order of the set list flowed really well for me and it was passive work. I would just be listening to it in the car, listening to it while I was doing other things. And of course, practicing the songs in order as well. Number four, I had to fix my problem areas. Now, you may have realized that up until this point, I haven't played a single note of the set list on the actual drum set, which is important because so often I hear people saying, I don't have a drum set, so I can't actually practice and get better. But the first 25% of my prep was done completely away from the kit, which is vital. Plus, people like Chris Turner do almost all of their practicing away from the kit, like this. Trust me, you're gonna wanna learn from this guy, so join the wait list up here. But now that I've done all this prep away from the kit, it's time to actually work out the kinks on the kit. I won't lie, there's a bit of a transitional period here going from not playing on the kit to actually playing on the kit. So I gave myself about five to 10 playthroughs of each song, and during that time, just tried to analyze what are the problem areas? Where am I getting stuck? Write them down, and then loop the crap out of them. Number five is real self critique. Now the problem is when I was practicing these I Prevail songs, I thought I sounded a lot better than I actually did. I would go back and listen to recordings of myself and realize I sounded like crap. So what I would do to fix this is play the song, record myself playing the song, not only on video, but on audio so that I can actually see the waveforms and see if I'm playing too early or playing too late. Then I would analyze both the audio and the visual and give myself a self critique report. Progress report. It's an older code, Skipper, I can't make it out. Instead of just saying, I sound bad, I had to analyze, why do I sound bad? Was it my timing? Were my dynamics too soft? Were my fills sloppy? I had to get really specific about what actually wasn't working, write it down, and I would repeat this process over and over again because it basically gave me the experience of playing 20 shows in one afternoon. Number six is expert adaptability. Now, there are two ways that I think about this. Number one is adapting your playing style to the music that you are trying to play. So for me, that meant adapting my playing style to be more metal focused. So this meant hitting harder than I normally do, playing power fills like four on the hands and two on the kick and all around using more of those metal sensibilities. Now, the second way that I applied this was I adapted their music to my playing style. So what were the things in my drumming already that I could add into metal that made me stand out more and sound a little bit cooler? So for me, this was adding small complexities like ghost notes or even just more interesting fills that weren't always the same things that I heard on most of the songs that they had already recorded. It really allowed me to add some more of my own spice. Now I get the question all the time, do you have to learn every single song note for note? And honestly, it depends on your goals, but for me, how I approached it was, I try to learn the songs note for note about 92%, and then that extra 8% 
I would fill in with my own sensibilities, like some of those ghost notes, some fills that I thought would just sound cooler. And this felt like a good balance of showing them that I can play the parts that are listed and then I can also improve them a little bit more. Number seven is excessive repetition. When I walked into this audition, there was a lot of pressure here. This was my make or break moment. If the audition didn't go well, I'd be stuck in my basement as per usual. I wanted to play exactly as good as I did in my practice sessions with all of the music and arrangements being the same, but there ended up being one big problem. Both of the vocalists decided to sit out the audition and instead just watch me play. Now, Normally this would be a huge problem because most of the time we follow the vocalist and the melody in the song to help us know when we're going from the verse to the chorus, but with no vocals, you lose a lot of that direction. But I had a secret. I prepped every single one of these songs using something that I call the click challenge. All it means is that you need to know the song so well that you can play the whole thing front to back with no mistakes to just a metronome. Even if the vocalist falls off off the stage and the guitar explodes, you can keep moving through the song. It was vital that I knew the song so well that I only needed a click, and I'm positive that that's actually one of the biggest things that helped me pass this audition, especially with the vocals sitting it out. Number eight is boring, but incredibly important. And that is learning to prioritize. As Eminem once said, you only get one shot. So I had to put everything else to the side to just focus on this. Because if you actually want your life to be different, then you have to prioritize things a little bit differently. For example, I wouldn't have been ready for the audition if I just practiced double bass pedal 30 minutes a day or worked on the set list 15 minutes a day. I had to start to move things in my life differently. So as a result of that, I practiced for five to six hours every single day, only surviving on mac and cheese because I had just spent my last dollar turning my garage into a drum studio. And yeah, that meant for a small period of time, there was less sleep, less seeing other people, less working on things that I wanted to be working on, less seeing my wife. I had to move my life differently, even if it was just for a short period of time, to get me a long-term reward. And like I said, I ended up getting the gig. It all worked out by stacking these eight skills together. But you might be wondering, what is everything that I did to get this opportunity in the first place? Well, I talk about that in this video right here. And if you wanna accelerate your double bass pedal in 30 days, just like I did, but taught from one of the world's best metal drummers, click right here to join the waitlist. Keep pushing forward.